Sunny, and welcome to Modern News on Tech Mac TV. Hoping that you guys had a lovely weekend. And joining me this morning is the beautiful Nicole Mazzewa. Thank you so much for watching Tech Mac TV and particularly Morning News, where we bring you a rundown of what is in our local press today. And well, we're going to give you a rundown of the headlines that were in the papers over the weekend and then also today's papers. So the Sunday Mail has the headline, United States role in demos unmasked. And the other headline on the Sunday Mail also reads, former VP Popo faces arrest. It also reads, Zim eyes 400 megawatts from Mozambique. Moving on quickly to the daily news on Sunday, Zim near point of no return, um, according to Chamisa. And then the standard reads, Chamisa threatens to intensify protests. And now for the news in detail, so we're going to quickly go through the standard, which we have there. Over to you, Mother. And um, the standard says MDC leader Nelson Chimisa has vowed that his party will intensify protests against President Emerson Mnangagwa after the police banned a demonstration that was scheduled for Harare last Friday. Yesterday, police arrested MDC chairperson Tabita Kumalo and the party's Vulawayu organizing secretary, Senator Helen Jiviri, for allegedly publishing false words. Hmm. That's the standard. And Chimisa threatening to intensify the protest. <laughs> so quickly jumping to the uh, to the Sunday Mail, uh, and it reads: United States role in demos unmasked. Um, and the story reads: details of how the United States of America ambassador to Zimbabwe, Brian Nicholson actively encouraged senior MDC officials to press on with Friday's demonstrations by assuring them that Washington would impose punitive measures that government arrest or assault the protesters have emerged. Diplomatic sources privy to the behind-the-scenes engagement between U.S. Ambas embassy officials and the MDC top leadership told the the Sunday Mail that the grand scheme is part of a broader coordinated project that also includes civil society organizations, some of them which have been planning protests against President Emerson Monangagwa during the ongoing SADC summit that ends today. So that's the story that we have there. Um, from the Sunday Mail. And um, also from the Sunday Mail, it says former Vice President Mpogo faces arrest. Vice, former Vice President Pelege Zelampogo faces imminent arrest after resisting officers from the Zimbabwe Anti Corruption Commission, ZAC, who wanted to pick him from his Bilawayo home over allegations of criminal abuse of public office. The ex Vice President thwarted the arrest on Friday at his Douglas Dell House after dramatically refusing to cooperate with Zak, arresting officers whilst his wife, Lorinda, and daughter, Sududuzo, ordered the officials out. A video of the incident has since gone viral. How do you refuse to be investigated? No, they didn't refuse to be investigated. I'm sure he refused to be taken out of his house. Why would you refuse to be taken out? Do they have a warrant for arrest? Well, but then he is supposed to cooperate because he is part of the government. You know? you but did you see the what? video and how they barged onto private property despite being low in forces? Okay. All right. So when you're reading this and when you watch the video, those are two completely different things. But it's none of our business. But it's none of our business. <laughs> Uh, moving on, Zim eyes 400 megawatts from Mozambique. That's another story that is running through the Sunday Mail. Government will this week dispatch a high-powered team of experts to Mozambique to negotiate for more electricity imports from hy Hydro Kapura Baza as authorities continue putting in place measures to improve power supply and avert rolling blackouts. Zimbabwe is currently receiving 50 megawatts from Mozambique, but authorities want to strike a deal for Zimbabwe to import between 150 megawatts to 400 megawatts. So, electricity is bound to improve, hopefully. You think? Yeah. <laughs> and still from the day, from the Sunday Mail, it reads, New Sadak Che calls for sanctions removal. New Sadak Che person, Tanzanian President Dr. John Magufuli, yesterday called on the international community to remove sanctions imposed on Zimbabwe, saying the country has now opened a new chapter and is ready to engage with the rest of the world. 
in his acceptance speech after the official ceremony hand, ceremonial handover of the chairmanship of the regional body at the ongoing 39th Ordinary Summit of the Heads of State and Government here, President Magufuli also called on leaders to rally behind the push to lift the embargo. It is not only Zimbabwe that is being affected by the deleterious impact of the sanctions, he said, by the entire region as well. And I quote, it would certainly be remiss of me to end my speech without saying, saying anything on Zimbabwe, he said. As we are all aware, this brotherly and all sisterly and sisterly country has been on sanctions for a long time. These sanctions have not only affected the people of Zimbabwe in their government, but our entire region. So the, the new SEDAC chair, Dr. Um, that the sanctions be hmm. Moving on to the daily news on Sunday, uh, it reads Zim near point of no return, Shamisa says. And the story reads I think today it's like all the papers actually headlines of what actually was transpiring on Friday. Okay, so uh, the Daily News on Sunday reads, With political tensions in Zimbabwe once again at near boiling point, opposition leader Nelson Chamisa has warned President Emerson Munangagwa that the country is fast approaching a point of no return unless, if, unless he acts urgently to avert the looming disaster. Speaking in an inclusive interview with the Daily News on Sunday yesterday, Chamisa also vowed... Sorry, I'll take that again. Chamisa also vowed the protests planned for the rest of the week around the country would go ahead, starting with one scheduled for Blauire tomorrow, notwithstanding the unwillingness by, tearf by fearful authorities to sanction the marches. So we probably will have news on that um, later on in the day on our Twitter and Facebook pages and also and probably tomorrow's press. Then we'll have... Um, the transpiring of what happened in Bilawayu today. Of course. And then it reads World Savages Police Brutality. The world has reacted with shock and concern to the use of this prop proportionate force by police during Friday's anti government demonstrations in Ari, which left school. This comes as rights group. The police are investigating the violence and torturing opposition supporters in the aftermath of the protests, which were banned at the last minute on Thursday night. The United States the United States several influential cases in slamming the savage beatings of protesters and other Zimbabweans by an unnecessarily belligerent police. And I quote, we condemn the excessive force the police used against Zimbabweans who were seeking to demonstrate peacefully. We call on Zimbabwe security forces to respect human rights and to exercise restraint. Tibo Nagy, the United States Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs, said. Hmm. So this also goes back to what transpired on Friday. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and this one was all over uh, social media. Of course. And there was the debate of where journalists need to draw the line between work and being human. But anyway, so once again from um, the Daily News on Sunday, as the story of the woman that was, mm -hmm. there was okay, fine, we don't know what happened to her. I won't talk about what happened to her. List I'll be misquoted, but um, we'll just go through that the story. The MDC has said the elderly lady was severely beaten by gun wielding police officers during Friday's anti government protests, suffered serious injuries that she had to go under the knife. The grandmother's name has been withheld to protect her identity. She suffered multiple injuries from the brutal attack, which was broadcast to the rest of the world by international television news channel Al Jazeera. In a statement, the MDC Secretary for Public Service and Social Welfare, Maureen Kademaunga, said the elderly woman who was wearing white garments in the television footage broadcast by Al Jazeera suffered several in injuries, including uh, a blow to the head. Yesterday, we managed to locate and get medical help for a party member, an elderly woman who was caught on film while being brutally assaulted by ZRP. So yeah, beaten granny has been operated on. And um, allow me to say good morning to our viewers who are joining us live. Good morning, Calvin Santana. Good morning, Manzenko Sidube. And uh, Calvin has said, unmasked pretending 
to be a new dispensation, yet it is a new deception. And Mazenko says the paper quality is no longer for using as toilet paper. Useless. I'm sure this is in, in response to the Herald, uh, to the, the Sunday, Sunday Mail. Mail. Okay. <laughs> in uh, Calvin, Santana also says uh, all of the Madara is talking about sanctions are the authors of Africa's suffering and unending poverty. They are used at killing and stealing. That's why the blame of everything goes on the sanctions. Calvin also said the police is not the police. It is just and only on PFUs clothed with police uniforms. That also has been trending on social media mm-hmm. about Zanu PFUs wearing a police uniform. So we can't comment on that or confirm it, but it has been doing the rounds on the social media. But we tell you what you are so Mbuya Vakura Kudaro na Sekuru Kudaro Mm Shakawa Mazweza Nu PFE Apacha Dama Demo Pakuda strategy. This is thank you Calvin, thank you Madeleine Kosi for for getting in touch. And <laughs> you know what <laughs> he's saying the papers yeah. are looking good. Kiki kiki, they are all spiced. Oh okay. good to see you two alive after the failed demo. <laughs> We are alive and still smiling, Calvin. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Despite the temper run and the tear gas exactly. and the brutality of the police, but we, we managed to survive so that we bring you the news. Okay, so I'll just quickly go back to the daily news. Zim's anti corruption dragged it catches Mpoko. Okay, so this is also a story that we read mm-hmm. earlier on from the Sunday Mail. So I'll just quickly uh, give you what the daily news on Sunday says. Um, Zimbabwe's anti graft watchdog has launched an investigation into former Vice President Pegasilam Povo, the latest big week to the latest big week to be ensnared into President Emerson Mnangagwa's crackdown on corruption. Since taking office in twenty eighteen, Mnangagwa has waged war on graft, which he has pledged not to abate until he stops corruption that he said in his words has a corrosive negative and retrogressive impact on our society as it undermines trust and government, erodes citizens' ethical standards and gnaws away at society's moral fabric and the potential of our nation as a preferred investment destination. Wow, that's like a mouthful. That's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. And, and, the, and they're only words. dragging him now and saying for, the Sunday Mail was saying for abuse of public office. Mm-hmm. But they left, he, they discarded him. Yeah. And now, then he's investigated. But anyway, that's what usually happens. You're then investigated when something goes wrong. Um, also joining us, Evans, Evans Mutomba, a very good morning to you. And he says, Mazimba fire. I felt that. Yeah. I felt that. And um, this one reads, we avoided bloodshed. Um, this is Chamisa. So the... Maybe it's, it's in response to also the rounds that were going on social media that they're cowards. Like, why would you just disappear after, you know, calling for a protest and then you just disappear? So these are some of the comments that people oversee. Yeah, so he's saying, Chamisa is saying we avoided bloodshed, and the story reads, Zimbabwe's main opposition leader, Nelson Chamisa, said his party backed down from a planned anti-government protest on Friday to avoid bloodshed and signaled the MDC would change tactics in confronting what is called a fascist government. Police calmed Harare streets rounding up suspected movement for democratic change MDC supporters after using batons and water cannons to break up a protest that authorities had declared illegal. The MDC leader would dispute President Emerson Nangagu's election win last year and accuses him of being as repressive as predecessor Robert Mugabe said his party had followed the law but authorities responded in bad faith. Hmm. So he's saying we avoided, so people, I think that's uh, Okay, Nicole and I think that it's, respo- it's, a re- it's his response yeah, to people yeah. saying that he's a coward for him and the rest of the big wigs from the MDC are cowards for not being at the forefront of the demo. Mm-hmm. Or maybe people did not get the memo from the leaders that the demo was called off. They just thought even if the rumors from the ZRP, we could still go on and continue. But sadly, it tends to be bloody and people injured. But He's saying we're just avoiding bloodshed, guys. We're not cowards. We're avoiding 
bloodshed. Yeah. So the Sunday Mail, going back to the Sunday Mail, five contractors for Harare Chirundu dualization. Government has completed the selection process of five contractors to undertake the Harare Chirundu Highway rehabilitation and its subsequent dualization with road surveys already underway. The Harare Chirundu Highway dualization project is part of the 2.7 billion Bay Bridge Harare Chirundu venture covering 971 kilometers. According to the Infrastructure Development Bank of Zimbabwe, the project has been divided into three sections, Bay Bridge to Harare with 570 kilometers and eight toll plazas. Harare Chirundu construction, 342 kilometers and six toll plazas and the Harare Green Road covering 59 kilometers with three toll plazas. So um, I'm pretty sure that very soon we're going to be seeing uh, the dualization of the Chirundi route and Calvin is also commented on the Chamisa story and he's saying I salute Chamisa for the call of not going up front. Imagine with the tension, if Chamisa had shown his face, OMG, trust me, we, sh we should have been in a civil war or more deaths that day. But he chose not to go out to prevent more spark. Chamisa anongodiwa so, aneka that, kikwa enzo I shall. Okay. Okay, thank you so much for your comments and thank you so much for watching. Um, it makes it makes the show very so much better, you know. <laughs> he yeah. ha he had to he had mm. to make sure that mm. you get it that he's got. I think that 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 yeah. that vroom. Yes. So <laughs> this one should this one is the news day, and it reads soldiers green bombers dressed in police uniform. The Nelson Chamisa lead MDC has sensationally claimed that soldiers and graduates for ZANU PF's notorious National Youth Service, also known as Green Bombers, were on Friday dressed up in riot police gear and deployed to crush an anti government protest organized by the opposition party in Harare. Uh, party organizing secretary Amos Chibaya told Newsday yesterday that the party was concerned after it emerged that some people wearing police uniform but not attested to the police force were used to beat up demonstrators who took to the streets to protest against the skyrocketing cost of living, souring inflation, shortages of critical basic commodities and endless power outages. Mm. Okay, so these are all just allegations. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is just allegations, and we we yet to to prove them. But if if they're proved, what then happens? I think already they are a little bit difficult to prove. You know, you can't because you don't know. Maybe they have pictures, and then they can tell that this person is a green bomber and not a, a member of the ZRP. I don't know what happens then. You know, I think once you figure it out, then. It's, it's, it's so it's hectic. It's re it really is. My concern is even actually finding out that this person uh -huh. is n does not belong to the force. It's going to be very difficult. So let's just say when we got over. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. The rest. It's another story for another day. <laughs> Still on the Chimisa issue. Carmen is saying, I'm also thinking when the coup happened, I don't remember Edie showing even his shadow. Instead, he was hiding in South Africa, afraid of his life. Uh, at least Chamisa was at the head office. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, okay, so Chamisa was all on the street, but at the head office. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. that's, <laughs> at least Chamisa was at the head office. That's Calvin saying, but you know what, sometimes it's hard for these people to do it from the forefront. From the forefront, but that's what people are wanting and are saying, that they have to be at the forefront. Okay, so moving on to the Herald, uh, it reads, government stands firm on illegal demos. Yeah, so it's 
still making rounds, the demo issues. Demos have been in the press. Exactly. So the illegal demonstrations in Harare in Harare's city centre last Friday was a failed attempt at getting Zimbabwe on the agenda of the recently ended SADC summit in Tanzania, which saw President Munangagwa assume the chairmanship of the region organ on politics, defence and security. Foreign Affairs and International Trade Minister Spusisomo said this yesterday in a statement in which he vowed to continue re-engaging with all those who, and I quote, who for whatever reason chose to distance themselves from Zimbabwe over the past two decades or so. Minister, Minister Moyo uh, said while well, government takes heed of criticism on the manner in which demonstrations were handled, the same critics have been suspiciously quiet on the behavior, on the behavior um, of the demonstrators who violated a court ruling. Okay, so so the government is actually serious and still stand firm that they can't, the illegal demos would just not go. And please go up again. Um, so just so we, you know, we don't know, our president has now claimed, is now the chairman of what? This, of SADC, yeah? No. No? Can you go on? Okay. okay. Right. On, no. On politics, he is the chairperson oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. of the regional organ. He is the chairperson of SADC on politics, defense, yes, and security. Yeah. I will not comment any further on that. So, just so you know, viewers, Calvin, this is for you. He's our president, ED, is now the SADC chairperson on politics, politics defense, and security. Yes. And back to the to the Herald, it says Sadak declares anti Sakshan's um day. But then we we did read that from 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 the from, from the, the Sunday mail. mail. Yeah. yeah, so it's just that um the Sadak countries have declared October twenty fifth is Solidarity Day against illegal sanctions imposed on Zimbabwe and resolved to conduct various activities in their respective countries on that day to resolve for the removal for the immediate removal of the sanctions the secretariat has also since been tasked to escalate the lobby with the current african union chairperson egyptian president abdel fatah el sisi who will be expected to raise the issue at the upcoming 74th united nations general assembly in september so 25 october will be anti-sanctions anti-sanctions day for sadak as they are trying to get the sanctions lifted for the country of Zimbabwe. High Court blocks planned Blawayo protests is another story that is running through uh, in the Herald. The High Court has blocked today's planned demonstrations by the MDC Alliance in Blawayo following an urgent chamber application by residents, business community and churches. Blawayo High Court Judge Justice Thompson Mabikwa ruled that MDC Alliance could not go ahead with the demonstrations after the Confederation of Zimbabwe Retailers Association, the Blawayo uh, United Residents Association, the Apostolic, Christ the Apostolic Christian uh, Council of, of Zimbabwe and the Grain Millers Association of Zimbabwe yesterday approached the High Court on an urgent basis seeking an order prohibiting the opposition party from carrying out the demonstration in the city. So this is what? The businesses, the, the church, residents, and the residents. They are actually refusing to for, for the demos. So they're the ones who approach the code. Yes, and then the code then decided, you know, you know, for the good of 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 everyone and you know in Blai let's not do these protests. Okay. That's that's what it says there. <laughs> so <laughs> So I don't know you guys. Well we can only today the Herald's got quite a mouthful. Um, back to the Herald it's uh, running a story which means teachers to know four languages. How many languages do you know? No. 
do you mean no or okay I, I, okay let's hear first what they're saying what what no because you might know i know french i can't speak french yeah. it'll soon be mandatory for newly qualified teachers to know at least four of the 16 zimbabwe's official languages a cabinet minister has said high and tertiary education science and technology development minister professor amon murwira met the revelation during a colorful graduation ceremony at belvedere technical Teachers College recently. The graduation was running under the theme Revitalizing Human Capital Development through Heritage Based Science and Technology for Industrialization. Minister Murira said Zimbabwe cannot have an education system that does not focus its practical material on its heritage. Thus, government has adopted the heritage philosophy to anchor education. And I quote A teacher to graduate should now have at least four of the 16 official languages. Hmm. So Back to my question, uh -huh. how many languages do you know? According, in the context that the Herald is using it. Of actually learning. Of actually learning, yeah. I know, Shona and Isin David, I love Venda, but I, 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 I can't speak Venda. Yeah. I'd love to learn Nambia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love to learn Nambia, but I, I, I only know Shona and Isin David. Yeah, okay. Of the 16, not the bad. 16. Pretty, it's pretty impressive. How many do you know? What? Okay, back to the daily news. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on the daily news, it reads government cracking down on the MDC amid fears of an uprising by jittery authorities. Wait, so which one are the authorities here? The government? Read the authorities. Okay, authorities. Authorities. Fearful authorities are intensifying their crackdown against the opposition, with police arresting a number of MDC officials at the weekend, in addition to banning anti-government protests that were slated for Blair today, the Daily News can report. This comes as political analysts who warn President Emerson Mnangagwa's efforts to end the decades of Zimbabwe's international isolation are now serious jeopardy following last Friday's savage attacks by heavily armed police on, pe on peaceful protesters. The analyst pointed to the mismatch between the rising state-sponsored violence and abductions targeting government critics and the escalation in Nagagwa's re-engagement effort, efforts with the United States, Britain and major Western counties. So that's, that's the daily news. That's the daily news. news. And... Um, ANZ Modus titles double readership. At a time when many, ti many titles are struggling to keep their heads above water, two of Zimbabwe's most iconic newspapers, the Daily News on Sunday and the Financial Gazette, have both more than doubled their readership over the past year. This is according to the latest report for the past half of 2019 of the independent Zimbabwe All Media and Product Survey ZAMPs. So the ZAMPs statistics simply are showing that. Um, Daily News on Sunday and Financial Gazette have gathered more readership. And um, a viewer is saying, the story of sanctions is now a backward thing. People now know the truth about why they are suffering. Yes, sanctions cripple an economy, but for us, it is purely corruption and poor governance, period. Someone can fly a one billion jet to go and get a one million dollar loan. <laughs> really? <laughs> 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 And um, this one is a Greek show kicks off. Um, the 109th edition of the Six Days Zimbabwe Agricultural Show opens in Harare tomorrow, and that's today. today, with the major highlights being a conference seeking to promote local products, another one for agribusinesses, as well as a discussion on power and energy. The event, which is rebranded from Harare Agricultural Show to Zimbabwe Agricultural Show in January, was initially scheduled to run from 26 to 31. However, it was brought forward to this week as part of the organization's effort to realign the event with the national and international calendar. So the agricultural show just kicks off. So to those who are in Harare, make sure you make your way to the exhibition park 
with uh, Zimbabwe Agricultural Show is it's now rebranded will be taking place. Exactly. And we will also be giving you updates as we will be live from the Zimbabwe yes, Agricultural indeed. Show. So we'll tell you all the interesting bits, what you can find, where you can find it for those that are in Harare or for those that actually want to come to Harare for the oh it's now the Zimbabwe Agricultural Show, yeah. So just stay tuned and we'll be updating you where you can see it. You can actually see it on TechMag TV and also on, our, on, on Technomag, which you can access on www.technomag.co.zw. And this one. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you laughing? I want you to take it. No, okay, this one reads huge payout plan for civil servants. Government is understood to be preparing a meaningful offer, and that one is in courts, for civil servants as it seeks to address the challenges they face of high prices of goods and services. The offer is said to be tabled during the next engagement of the National Joint Negotiating Council, which is expected to meet in the near future. A top government official close to the negotiations confirmed to the Herald that indeed a package that should go a long way in cushioning civil servants has been decided. And I quote, government taking its cue from its engagement with the Apex Council is preparing a meaningful offer to address hardships facing civil servants for discussions during the next meeting of the National Joint Negotiating Council to be convened soon, said the source on condition of anonymity. Mm, this must be nice. <laughs> I'm so passionate about civil servants getting a raise. So, but yeah. they did get a raise. They did, yeah. But then they are actually going to get more. Okay. A meaningful yeah. one. A meaning, a meaning. Okay, this is the Herald reporting that in courts, a meaningful one. It makes me a little bit worried. Why are you worried? Because it's in courts. Usually when I say something in courts, I don't believe it. It's like... Um, okay, the example that I was going to use was going to be a little bit inappropriate, but you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, <laughs> like load shedding will end. See what I just did? Well, moving on to the next story, ZPC to construct 100, 120 megawatt power plant at Feruka. The Zimbabwe Electricity Regulatory Authority, ZILA, has granted Zimbabwe Power Company, ZPC, a license to build a 120 power plant in Mutare. The development is expected uh, to augment power supplies in the country, which is currently experiencing power shortages due to low water levels at Kariba, as well as challenges at Wange Femal Power Station. So that's another power plant that is coming through. Uh, for Zimbabweans to ease um, power outages. And the business herald with Zim eyes US 2 billion uh, for, from G7 nations. Zimbabwe will borrow 1.9 billion US United States dollars from the group of seven industrialized nations to clear debts to the African Development Bank, AFDB, and the World Bank, Finance and Economic Development Minister Mutuli Nube said. The group of seven, or G7, wealthy nations is made up of France, Italy, Canada, Germany, United States, Japan, and the United Kingdom. Clearing the position with this multilateral, multilateral lenders is key for Zimbabwe as it will open avenues for fresh concessional funding to support its external position, which has chiefly been the reason for runaway inflation. So, we are borrowing... 1.9 mm -hmm. billion dollars to clear a debt that we have. Yeah, I, I, just, I, I just don't understand. We're still borrowing? Can we still do that? Let's leave it there. Okay. Newsday. Mpoko hits back at Zach. It's like Mpoko is like <laughs> making the headlines for all the wrongest reasons. But okay, former Vice President Pegasila Mpoko yesterday rubbished claims that he refused to cooperate with the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission uh, officers on Friday, but instead accused the latter of being dishonest, exhibiting improper conduct, and wanting to arrest him without a warrant. Zach officers visited Mpogo at his Blauer residence as part of their investigations into a case of alleged abuse of office during his tenure as vice president. As vice president. Um, in the uh, Robert Mugabe era. I think this is what you were saying earlier on, that 
it was maybe it was because and also how they approached him at his house it because he claims it was inappropriate yeah and also if you guys have watched the video that is also making rounds i think you can then you know conclude for yourselves was was it proper was it handled poorly um so yeah i think We'll leave that for you guys to just conclude and draw your own judgments from that. ZANU PF worry of urban food aid. ZANU PF leadership in Marwanda reportedly having is reportedly having sleepless nights following the recent introduction of food distribution in urban areas, with the ruling party fearing that they'll lose to the few supporters in town that is currently under MDC party. Government recently announced the food aid would be distributed across the country, including in urban areas, with statistics showing that close to 6 million Zimbabweans are food insecure. Mm. 6 million. Do you remember when we were saying, do you remember? Yeah. I, I really like being right, you guys. I really do. But, oh, well. Okay, I'll just quickly give this one to you. The news day um, is running once again another story which reads government threatens NGOs again. And the story reads the ZANU PF government is again threatened to ban non governmental organizations deemed as failing to adhere to such regulations and pursuing a regime change agenda. In a statement yesterday, Home Affairs Minister Ken Matema ordered all NGOs in the country to cooperate with the government or risk deregistration. And I quote, let me state it again, all NGOs must work with the government or they should close their offices and each have to tell us who funds them and how they use their funds. If they do not work with the government, they are spy organizations. My ministry knows that its offices are human rights officers all the time during, all the time during the performance of their duties, said K. Matema. So NGOs, they're either going to do what's in line with the government or they face deregistration. Mm -hmm. But why did he mention about the funding, who funds them, and how they use their funds? Well, Should the government be involved when it's a non-governmental organization? Well, it just, it doesn't work like that. Oh, okay. It's, I don't think it's actually supposed to just now a government organization there's not the none it's gone okay the news day reads mdc fights for chief Ndiweni's release so as you know you guys uh, chief Ndiweni was arrested um over the weekend so okay so the story reads the nelson-led opposition mdc is about to fight for the release of Outspoken Tawazinduna traditional leader Chief Ndiweni, who was last week sentenced to 18 months in jail for maliciously damaging his sub subject's property worth $300. Blawayo Magistrate Gladmore Musho on Friday sentenced, sentenced Ndiweni and his 23 subjects to 24 months in jail, each of which Six months were conditionally suspended while the remainder of his commuted was commuted to 525 hours of community service. MDC National Spokesperson Daniel Molokele said the party would pressure uh, for the unconditional release of Chief Ndiweni describing the, Ill the legal wrangle as it's political persecution. Exactly. Precisely. So... Um, the MDC is saying that it's more political and there's no, there's, there's nothing basically with the, with the charges that are being leveled against him. There's nothing really tangible, but also the courts are saying that he damaged uh, property worth $300 um, for, <coughs> for his subject. And um, Calvin is saying, I don't get it. When the government gets in panic mode always, what? Do they fear Pella? Well, that question, Calvin, we cannot answer. But, well, there's fear of something, clearly, somehow. <laughs> Ain't we all afraid, though? So, um, this one reads, police ban MDC, Blawayo demo. Blawayo police yesterday issued a prohibition order Banning MDC's planned protest set for the city today and threatened a one-year jail term for those that defied the ban. Mm -hmm. So, 
you defy the ban, you you are going to jail. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly give that one to you as well. Okay, Ned Bank Zim posts two hundred twenty-five point three five percent profit after tax. NetBank Zimbabwe's profit after tax rose 225.35% to 14.2 million in the first half of the year ended June 30, 2019, due to exchange gains following the reintroduction of a local currency. The increase was from 4.36 million in the comparative 2018 period. And I quote, the bank posted a profit after tax of 14 million, t 14 million 203 for the six months to June 30, 2019. It is important to note that the previous comparative period was reported in the United States dollars at a rate of 1 is to 1 to the RTGS. The previous corresponding period recorded a profit after tax of 4.366 million. NetBank Zimbabwe Managing Director Charity Genius said in a statement accompanying the bank's financial results for the period under review. Net bank is making money moves, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so going to the daily news, MDC chairperson arrested. MDC national chairperson Tapita Kumalo, <coughs> Senator Helen Kofu, and six other opposition party activists are set to appear in court today facing charges of accusing President Nagako of stealing the July 2018 elections. Police here arrested uh, arrested Kumalo Mpofu. Uh, Women's Provincial Assembly Chairperson Luba Masocha, Elliot Mujeri, Tinashe Matimbura, Meli Kliniso Stole, and, and Shelton Tembo on Saturday afternoon while conducting a door to door awareness campaign in, Chaval in Chabalala yes. for today's planned protest in the city. Police yesterday banned the Blawayo March. Okay, so we have the uh, the MDC leadership of uh, being arrested, being arrested in Blawayo. So, uh, well, it just has to do with the Blawayo protests. So there's nothing there we can say. But well, this is on an interesting note. So on an interesting note from the Daily News, it reads: August 1, 2018 shootings. Combi driver sues defense minister. And the story reads. A Harare man is suing Defense Minister Opam Chinguri Kashiri for 313,000 over a lack disability sustained after being shot during the August 1, 2018 post election protests. Tapiwa Chuma cited Muchinguri Kashiri and Zimbabwe National Army Commander Itzai Chimonyo. He is demanding 3,230 special damages. Three is demanding three. $1,230 special damages for medical aid expenses arising from the reckless discharge and indiscriminate shooting by a ZNA member who was acting in the course and scope of his employment. He wants to fed the 200000 for nervous, nervous shock, pain and suffering endured consequent to the shooting, which he said was highly traumatic given that he was an innocent passenger not expecting to be shot at all. He says he was hospitalized, immobilized for several months and had to attend clinic daily for wound uh, for wound treating. So um, that means that he gave evidence during the commission of inquiry into the August 2018 post-election violence, which he commanded in his report that the state sets up a fund for compensation and provide urgent medical support to victims. So Chuma is suing um, Opam Chingui, uh, defeating yeah. 300k. Exactly. Yeah. Almost. It's almost 200, 300k, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, still on the daily news, A and O level June results out. The Zimbabwe School Examination Council, ZIMSEC, Board and Management yesterday released the ordinary and advanced level 2019 June results. So, yeah, that's something that you need to be on the lookout. Uh, for the results of the O and the A level that wrote in June. And the Daily News is running a story which reads ED ratifies African court protocol. And um, the story reads President Emerson Mnangagwa has agreed to ratify the protocol on the African Court on Human and People's Rights. 
effectively agreeing to the enforcement of the judgments of the court within Zimbabwe's domestic jurisdictions. Munagaga was taken over chairmanship of the Sadak Troika, was leading by example in ratifying the protocol Justi Justice and Legal Affairs, Minister Ziambi Ziambi said. The code based in Arusha, Tanzania, was established through a protocol of the Africa, African Union in Burkina Faso in 1998. It only came into force in 2004. So far, 30 out of 54 AU member states have... <coughs> 32 of the 54 member states have, of the AU have ratified the protocol, paving the way for the court's jurisdiction in civil matters. But the Zimbabwe government has refused to budge, despite years of attempts to get it to sign. So, ED ratifies African court protocol. Okay, so viewers, that's all that we had from our local papers from, from Sunday. To today. To today. So... Uh, I don't know if you have anything else? No, just uh, please go on to <laughs> www.technomat.co.w for more tech for tech news and also be sure to catch us uh, on TechMac TV and our Facebook page TechnoMag and TechMac TV for other news and also especially for the Zimbabwe Agricultural Show that will be happening on this week. And uh, to all our viewers, shout out to Calvin. Um, Manzenko, Sidube, and um, Evans, and everyone else who was joining us who didn't send a comment, but please do continue um, tuning into us every single morning and sharing and clicking the like button and also airing your comments and your views. No judgment space. <laughs> we don't judge. It's a safe space? It's a, it's a safe space. No codes. Yeah. Safe space. Yeah. I like that. Okay, so <laughs> thank you viewers for watching. My name is Nicole Madziwa and from me and the crew behind the scenes. And marvelous today, which you good. It's been lovely having you. We do hope that you have a marvelous day. So from us and the crew behind the scenes, have a marvelous one. It's goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.